welcome to A Well-Designed Business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. I hope by now you heard about the incredible free virtual business summit that we ran the week of April 6th through April 9th, 2020. This was hosted by My Doma Studio, and it was sponsored by Kravit, Article, Kirsch, Jaipur Living, Monogram Appliances, Summer Classics Gabby Home, IDS, Interior Design Society, and Revel Woods. This event, if you have not heard of it, was held live via Zoom, and it featured all of the incredible presentations and panel discussions that, along with My Doma Studio and these brands, these sponsors, we were scheduled to have at High Point Market Spring 2020. When the market was postponed, Sarah and I looked at this amazing combination of topics, designers, and experts that we had assembled, and we said to each other, we just cannot let this go by the wayside. So over 14 days, 19 hours was run, okay? 19 hours of content aired on everything from Darla Powell at Wingnut Social teaching us social media strategies and practices to how to do product sourcing with John Adcox, okay? Also panel discussions with industry leaders like Tracy Connell, Toby Fairley, Kate O'Hara, Cheryl Luckett, and so many more. Off the Hook does not even come close to describing this event. Think about this. We had an average of 800 designers and business owners watching each and every live session. Okay. How Think about that, all right? Now, here's the good news. If you missed it, and I'm totally making you crazy right now, you can still get the video recordings. That's right. Right now, for the next couple of weeks, My Doma Studio is going to let them be available to you. So go to mydomastudio.com forward slash one nine hours, okay? M-Y-D-O-M-A-S-T-U-D-I-O.com forward slash one nine hours hours, okay? And my DOMA will graciously email you the entire video conference, all right? Don't hesitate on this. There are 14 presentations, and I promise you one was better than the next. So today's show, today's show is a replay of the solo presentation that I did on Thursday, April 9th, how to lead your business through the COVID-19 crisis, okay? And um, I have a little bit of perspective here that is probably of interest to you, okay? Having been, number one, having been through several significant economic downturns in my career, but also in real time, I'm running one business, the podcast business, that is a team of seven and completely virtual, all right? And that team is a combination of consultants and employees. On the other hand, I have my brick and mortar business, Window Works, which is a team of 13 and is all in person, okay, in a building, and each and every one is on payroll. So the needs of each of these businesses are different in good times, let alone in these times, right? The podcast model of my business may be similar to your firm if you work from home and have only one or two or three employees with consultants taking care of services, maybe like bookkeeping or drafting or social media, right? And on the other hand, if you have a larger firm and you maybe own or rent studio space and you have five, six, seven, eight more employees, your business may mirror my window works business more. So either way, I have some insight into what you are experiencing during this most unusual and frankly, scary time in our world. So I also want to mention that I did do a solo episode a few weeks ago, episode number 519, which I suggest you listen to as well on the top strategies for getting through 
this financial crisis, okay? Um, The thing is, it's changing every week what we have to do. So this conversation today, I take it a step deeper as the crisis has certainly deepened, right? Now, before I start this show, I want to acknowledge again and give my great thanks and huge admiration to Sarah Daniele, the CEO of My Doma Studio, and her entire team for stepping up and in a matter of a week, literally, (laughs) mobilizing and running a flawless week of presentations, each one designed to help us be better business owners. And also a thanks again to the sponsors who each one immediately said yes, Yes, I want to support this effort. And yes, I want to be a part of bringing this to the designers across the world. So thank you again to Kravit, Article, Kirsch, J. Poor Living, Monogram Appliances, Summer Classics, Gabby Home, IDS, the Interior Design Society, and Rebel Woods. Hats off to each of these brands who have the betterment of our businesses top of mind. Okay, let me get you going over to this presentation about how to lead your business through the COVID-19 crisis. All righty. So, um, I've started every session by this, and I don't want anybody to underestimate how grateful I am to Sarah Daniele and her entire team for putting all of this together for us. It it was not an easy undertaking to do this, and so I think it's awesome that they did it. And and again, to the shout out to all of the sponsors, Monogram is sponsoring this particular session, but we have had, um, you know, a whole host of sponsors all week, and we are grateful to all of them. Okay, so. Let's have a little chat, right? Um, There's a lot to be said about what's happening in the uh, business climate right now. And it was, um, it's funny because I put together a presentation a week ago. And two days ago, I looked at it and I went, so it's just, it's so much is changing every single day. And um, much there's, there's parts of it in the way that we're going to handle this that are, are the same. And, but I've now focused on three areas that I think that we need to think about. And the first is, you know, the problem, mitigating the problem, mitigating the losses, protecting and preserving our businesses, okay? And the second is, you know, so it's the steps that fall under the umbrella of protection and preserve, okay? Um, And then it's the steps that fall under the umbrella of focusing on sales and marketing. And then finally, I feel like there is a component now that has to be addressed as looking inward and looking inward both at our business and at ourselves, okay? And then finally, the component of, of gratitude. And so let's, let's take these three areas. From a very practical standpoint, um, you know, mitigating loss and protecting and preserving your, bit, your business is, is it's truly a list of practical strategies to do. Uh, It's not even gonna be possible for me to actually go through them in detail and list every single one of them for you. However, I do suggest that you do reach out to your inner circle. Um, You know that if you've read my first book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, that I believe that you need your dream team. And this is why. It's so funny because in the first book, if you have read the first book and you have been in business and your business has been, you know, mostly healthy and happy and everything else, I, I have to believe that you probably, many of the things in that book, you thought, okay, okay, okay. But now that we're in crisis, I would like you to go back and rethink about it. So when I said in the very beginning to know your mission and your core values, that's even, that's even stronger now. Why are you in business? What do you do? Who do you do it for? And how do you serve them? Because you need to be so clear on that so that you can be laser focused in crisis. Okay. Then the second thing I said was you needed a dream team. You needed your CPA, your lawyer, your mentors, your coaches, your peer collaborators. Okay. We had that awesome panel the other day where we had the mentor and mentee relationships and the peer collaboration relationships. These are, you know, when business is happy, go lucky, They seem like extra, they seem like fluff, but they're critical now, aren't they? Because don't you need to reach out 
and ask somebody something? Don't you need to reach out and just say, I'm scared to death. How are you doing today? And how about some days the person reaches out and they're scared, but you're having an okay day. So you cannot underestimate your dream team. All right. Um, so when I, I, the reason that I went down that road is because so much of what you have to do to mitigate loss now and to preserve and protect your business, you know, you really do have to do from an informed standpoint. This is not, you know, things that you do being half aware of how to do them. All right. So the number one thing is that cash flow is king. You must, must, must get a handle on your cash flow. Um, I was just, I'm just hesitating because some of this information, you know, if you are an entrepreneur, a business owner out there, and you've got two or three employees or more, you've got a rented studio space, a brick and mortar, whatever it is, then there's layers of this conversation that are even more important to you. Okay. Um, but he doesn't have, as a solo, you should understand where you are, even if you don't have overhead, like great overhead with rent and so forth like that. Okay. But so cash flow is king. Get the handle on that. Um, and it occurred to me as I was thinking about this conversation with you today that we did the episode with Kim Merlitti. Um, it was episode 442, I want to say, 442. And the episode was how to know your cash on hand. So I'm not going to sit here and teach you 45 minutes of how to figure out your cash on hand because number one, let's be serious. I'm not the expert at it, but Kim is. Okay. So I would say if you don't know how to evaluate that, go start with that episode. And then secondly, go to your CPA, go to the people that you trust in your finance world. If you really don't understand how to analyze this. And then keep in mind that you have the resources of the podcast. We have Michelle Williams and Kim or Liddy. If you absolutely have no one to help you figure this out. Okay. So get a handle on your cash on hand. All right. The next thing is I want you to also review any money owed to you. If you have any, any clients with outstanding money and you have finished the project, you must go collect that money. And of course, you're going to do it with care. You're going to do it with respect. You're going to do it with tact. But if you have finished the project, you need to go get that money. This is, this is, um, this is not the time to be polite as far as, oh, well, I probably shouldn't. No, this is like, this is survival right? This is, you are needing to keep your business alive. And so um, do not underestimate that, not do not underestimate. Do not think that you don't have the right to do it. That's it. If you have completed the work, it is your right to go and say, I, I'm going to need you to pay this. I would love for you to pay it. Whatever the circumstances, whatever the language is, but go get the money that you have on the street. That's how we say it. What kind of money? What's the money on the street? Let's bring it in. Okay. Um, what I want you to also do is reach out to your vendors. Um, this is the time to reach out to any vendors, any trades people that you might owe money to. Right. And if you need to switch from uh, your terms, get them from 30 days to 60, get them from 60 to 75, work out a payment plan. Do not hesitate to do this at this point either. All right. I don't want you to leave anybody hanging. I, 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 I definitely do not want you to leave anybody hanging. But I also want you to, with the advice of whoever you go to for your financial advice, figure out that's why we want to know our cash on hand. We want to know our projection. We want to know what's happening so that if we need to ask for extension on terms, then you need to do it. Like, don't hesitate to do it. Don't think, what I don't want you to do is think, oh, I probably should do that in a couple of months, or maybe I can wait. The time to ask is now, right? There is a sign that sits on my desk um, that says, the time to fix the roof is when the sun is shining, okay? So there's clouds on that sun right now, but it's not pouring rain. And so the time to go and set up these arrangements and ask for these things is now when it's just cloudy because you come to the table without, um, 
hysteria without, um, you know, without something to negotiate with, frankly, right? In five or six months, if gosh, you know, God forbid, you have depleted your resources, now there's nothing to negotiate. You have no ability to say, I owe you this amount of money. Can I switch it to terms that we can both agree on so that I can keep my business open? Because understand, there isn't a vendor on the planet that wants you to go out of business. Because if you go out of business, then they have no option. They have no ability to get any of the balance due. So everybody in this scenario is motivated to make a great deal. That's a win-win. All right. And if you happen to have debt, you need to start to look at how you are going to spread that out or how you are going to manage it. All right. All right. You need to go through your expenses with a fine tooth comb. I did say some of these beginning t tips I did say on the podcast a few weeks ago. So hopefully many of you have already done it, but I also shared, that was episode 519, and I shared with you, you know, how I came to know these things and how I came to understand these things and be able to write them in that first book. It's because in the first recession that Window Works went through in the early 90s, we almost crumbled. We literally almost lost our business because these steps that I'm talking to you about, some of them we took right away, but some of them we said, oh, we don't need to do that yet. It'll be fine. We can wait. We can this. And it's no. It's these are the things that the people who survive this are doing now. And I just sounded like really like, but I mean it. I've had a dozen conversations in the last two weeks with business owners that have businesses anywhere from $500,000 a year gross revenue to 10 and $12 million a year gross revenue. And two a one, every single one is taking these steps now. So if you have been thinking, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't, I'm telling you, you should. Okay. The other thing is, is that I hope, and again, it was in the first book, is that you have a line of credit. Um, even if you've never needed it before, because this is when you might need it. And this is exactly why you have a line of credit for the rainy day when the roof needs to be fixed. Okay. Um, so maybe you don't have a line of credit. Maybe you do. If you've got credit cards, now is the time. Uh, now is the time to go and talk to those institutions about those terms. Can you get approved for more credit? Can you get a, a, a larger line of credit? Can you get approved for more credit on your credit cards? Do not confuse this. I'm not suggesting that you are going to frivolously, frivolously use your credit cards, but I'm suggesting maybe two, three, or four, or five, six months from now, having some room on a credit card might be the difference between getting to the end of the month or not. That's the truth of it. So um, what I'm talking about is it's cloudy and get ready. That's what I'm talking about. So these are some of the things. Go to your bank or go to your credit institutions, get your ducks lined up in a row. And again, in that book, if you remember, I said to you, if you're a brand new business, even though you might be working from home and you don't have any overhead or capital, ask your banker for credit. And I shared it recently on a podcast. I just took Luann Nigara Inc. and separated from Window Works in the beginning of this year. And I set up the business and we incorporated it and everything else. And I set up my business banking account and I set up my business um, credit card account. And I said to them, I want a line of credit. And he's like, oh, how much do you want? I said, I want 100K. I mean, he literally, because I had been the fourth or fifth conversation, he knew my business model. And he's like, why do you need 100K? I said, I want it. I just want it. And the thing is, he and ultimately said to me, he goes, well, based on everything, I could give you, you know, 20K without even asking anybody. I said, and how do we get 100K? And he said, well, I'd have to, we'd have to do a form and fill it out. We'd have to ask. And I'm like, then go ahead and ask. Okay. I didn't need 100K. But the point is that I wanted a line of credit in case I needed it. Okay. So I want you to go evaluate where you can get liquid money if you need it. All right. Um, once it's, the other thing is to really consider is your owner's pay cuts. If you have a, a firm of multiple employees, then 
I mean, we took pay cuts as owners three weeks ago. So I would say if you haven't done it by now, I would do it. That's what I would do. 10, 20, 30, 40%, whatever you can afford to do. Um, and also, quite frankly, whatever you need to do based on the projections and the analysis that you have come to with the help of your CPA or your financial advisor. Okay. Um, but this is the time for the hard decisions. This is the time. You look, it's your company. If in three weeks this has all been, you know, Stuart Little, the chicken, you know, the, the sky is falling, you can give yourself your money back. But, you know, anybody that I have talked to in the last several weeks that is running a business has taken an owner pay cut. All right. And then it's time to look at the next level is to look at employee pay cuts. And, and laying off and, and asking employees to go on unemployment. Again, it's one of the hardest things you'll ever do as a business owner. I have to tell you, you think having hard conversations with clients is difficult. You think being in a pickle or a jam with a vendor or a trade who doesn't seem to have your back um, and won't step up and do the right thing for you or the client. You think that's hard. But if you have never experienced laying off an employee yet, uh, be prepared. Because that is probably, I think it's the single hardest thing that um, I've ever experienced as a business owner, is to look at an employee that you probably have come to love in our case when it's happened. It was the fact of it. Um, but if nothing else, that you recognize the value that they bring to your company and to have to look at them and say, this is the end of the line. So this is why I'm asking you on the top to do those all those other things, because this will be one of the final things that you may have to do. Um, but if it is what you have to do, you have to do it because this is survival, right? And then finally, um, you know, avail yourself of all of the, the grants, the relief packages, the stimulus packages, whatever it is, there is so much out there. And, um, you know, for us at Window Works, we are applying for everything that is appropriate. And if we don't need it, we will pay it back. It's as simple as that. But if we need it, we've got it. And so we haven't received it yet. But what I'm saying is, do not not do that. Okay. And I will tell you that my friend Kate O'Hara, who is the CEO of O'Hara Interiors, she and I were talking on Monday after our uh, panel discussion that we had on 19 Hours on Monday. And we had a little chat afterwards. And she said, you know, I am just researching like crazy. And I am reading everything I can on the different levels of grants and packages and what's available. And I said, my goodness, that's that what a valuable thing, a resource that your whole team is taking advantage of. And you know what she did? She shared, the, she shared it with me. So I have it. And she made a list of um, really good websites to get good information about the different grants and about the different packages that are available to us as small business owners. And then she also put a list of grants that are available. So these are not loans that need to be repaid. These are companies and organizations that are putting grants out there for small businesses. So somehow, some, I, I can, I, somehow, some way, we'll share that with you. I don't know how to do that technically right now. <laughs> but you will want to thank Kate O'Hara at O'Hara Interiors for that. Um, okay, so these are all the cold, hard facts about um, getting real with your finances. And that's really the gist of this section of it is get very real with your finances. Do not have your head in the sand. You know what I said to you on episode 519, don't overreact, but don't not act. Okay. So, and I cannot stress for you enough how thinking back to the early nineties, that was the number one mistake that we made that both Vin and I, Billy less so, but both Vin and I are very, um, well, all three of us are optimists, okay? But Vin and I are very comfortable with risk. And we're very comfortable with this feeling of, I got this, we can do this, we can make this happen. And so it was almost like, you know what they say, it was, it was, your, it was our Achilles heel, 
right? Because we had such a feeling of, oh no, we're just gonna plug through, it'll be fine. We, we could do this, we'll just sell something else, we'll just do something else, it'll be fine. And it just took us by surprise that um, sometimes things aren't fine and you need to get your ducks in a row quick, fast, early and definitively so that then you can kick in that, you know, that super go-getter, you know, mentality to make the things happen. Okay. So, um, but you need some help with it, right? Maybe you do. I, all I'm saying is if you do go get the help. All right. The advice. All right. The next phase of this is focus on sales and marketing. This is critical. You cannot not do this. If you were just in the um, presentation a few minutes ago, uh, last hour, and with the, with the rock star women that we had there, Toby Fairley said that the one thing that she really feels is one of her superpowers is focusing on the marketing and focusing on sales and driving it in. And this is something that she, she does every single day. And if you have neglected this, if you have always relied on referrals, if you have always just, um, you know, somebody will tell somebody who will tell somebody, this is the time to look in the mirror. You must put yourself out there. And the thing about what it is, is, is I want you to think about solving problems. That's always how we attract our client to us is because we empathize, we figure out what the problem is, and then we create the solution for it, right? So that's business 101. That's what we've always done. But think about now, what are the particular problems that your clients are going through? And the way to come to that is, guess what? They're human beings, and um, so are you. And so to some extent, we have this shared experience happening and with being in shelter in place, right? So if you are working from home and you are the CEO of your company, and even if, like, like think about how many of our colleagues are homeschooling while they're trying to run their business at home, right? How, I mean, I've heard people say simple things as I have three kids and we have one home computer because before that, each kid was only home X amount of hours a day, and they didn't really get computer time during the weekend. On the weekend, we rationed their time, whatever the thing was. So the thing is, think about very closely, what are the problems that you are experiencing with the way you are living through the COVID-19 crisis? So you could be a solo. You could be a single person. You could be a single person and a solopreneur. So are you experiencing loneliness? Are you experiencing a little stir craziness because there's no human beings? What, you know, what, what could you as an interior designer do to alleviate that? I don't know, do a weekly Facebook Live, right? Because think about that. Somebody that really is in because they, you know, they're not married, they're not in a partnership, they don't have kids, they would really think that that's amazing if their hobby is design, they're a design enthusiast, right? So take it to you're married, you and your spouse both have jobs, you're both working from home, and you're homeschooling kids. Is there a workspace set up? How could you, how could you help someone create a workspace where there wasn't one before? If anybody can do it, it's you, right? So is it a pop down desk that they put on their wall, you know, can you be the one to come up with that solution? And the thing is, if you go to your existing client base and you reach out to them and you say, pick up the phone and say, hey, how are you? What's going on? Just talk like a human being. And then they might say, you know, how's, you might say, how's it going working from home? Oh my goodness. Like, uh, everybody's fighting for the kitchen table. Like I, I, like I got kids homeschooling. My husband's trying to work at the table. I'm trying to work at the table. This is insanity. And if you're like, you know what, over, you know, in that little nook in your guest bedroom, I'll tell you what, let me send you a link. I, I've got a desk that I think that would work. It'll roll it, whatever it is. Okay. Think out of the box, but really think internally, what am I experiencing? If you're having a hard time prior, finding a place to work, then your clients are probably too. 
All right. And the other thing I want to say to you about that, it, well, I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> so figure out ways that you can solve the problems that they are experiencing now. And that's in addition to the obvious, which is any projects that you had coming up in the pipeline, pipeline that you might be able to continue to push along and get it to a point until it requires you to physically be in their home. So if you are just about to start, you know, a room renovation or something, well, I mean, if you've got the measurements and even if you have the rough measurements, you have the client take the rough measurements, you can start to work the floor plans. You can start to you know, source the pieces, the furniture, the lighting, all of that stuff. And the thing is, is that, again, if you think about the clients that you have and the ones that you know, you probably know the ones that would really be really just fine with moving the project along during this time. And the ones that might be a little bit more sensitive and not, not really want to. But the point is, is that there are people that are happy to keep doing things now that have the money, have the finances, and some have the time. And, you know, especially if you are your demographic, your ideal client is a working two career, two, two working career couple, or even just a single working person, even, you know, working, like how much more do you get done when you work from home? Like an eight hour day that gets interrupted by 50 phone calls and 3000 people, all of a sudden you get that eight hours done in four hours. So yeah, maybe they would go on a Zoom call and help let you help them move the project along. And my point is you have permission to do that. You have permission to start that conversation because this is the life or death of your business. You're fighting for its survival right now. Don't be embarrassed to do that. You just always do it with respect, right? That's the thing. Okay. So it's focusing, being creative, empathizing, filtering through yourself as a human being, what are the challenges that you've had during this crisis, and putting that creative, amazing brain that you have on this and coming out with something that could help your potential consumer, okay? Then the final thing is, is to look inward. And I want you to look both inward at your business and inward at yourself as a human being. So to look inward at your business, what this means in my mind is, is this is a good time for you to really make sure that you do have your systems locked down, that you really do. We had that session a few, uh, an hour ago with those really brilliant ladies, um, Tracy Connell, Monica Wilcox, Toby Fairley, and Sandra Funk. If you missed the session, make sure to watch it in replay because every single one of them described like how insanely detailed their systems are and that they are in writing, that they exist. They exist in Asana. They exist in a Google Drive. They exist in Excel spreadsheets. They are real. You know what I say, that if you do your thing every single day, but you don't have it in a duplicatable process, then you actually don't have a business. You have a you. Okay. And if your only desire is to have a you, great. But if you're just, I got to believe that if you're here, your desire is to have a business. And so if you have not had the time, because it, it's, it's a real thing, you know, when the world is spinning at the pace that it spins at, and we're out at where our job sites and we're doing floor plans and we're doing all the things that you do. It is hard to put the brakes on and do this. I've spent the better part of four years asking successful interior designers, how have they put that in their work day? How have they put the brakes on to create their systems? You have an opportunity now to do it. Okay. So Look inward at your business. And if it needs some work, this is the time to do it. And the other thing I would say in looking inward at your business is, is your business what you want it to be? Because this is the time to reinvent it. This is the time to reinvent it. This is like the gabillionth webinar I've done in the last two weeks. And 
in every one, a question has come to me that says from different people, from different audiences, I was about to start my business. Should I still do it? One person asked, I was about to rebrand. Should I still do it? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. What better time to start a business when the world is slow, when business is slow? because you can really set the foundation. Again, referencing the last panel, Monica Wilcox, I asked each of these you know, really brilliant women, what would they tell their five-year-old business self, their business self at the five-year mark? And Monica said, I would tell myself that to stop then and get everything in place, in process, and systemized, and not to keep plugging through and ignore that part of it. So, if you are just launching now, you know, honestly, you're in a better position than the rest of us that have a big ship that we have to keep afloat. So yeah, lean in, take the time to get it all down pat. And if you're rebranding, better yet, come out new. But I want those of you that are in business for many years to just do the little self-check on the business. Am I running the kind of business that makes me happy? that I'm passionate about. You know, if you coach with me, always on a questionnaire that you get from me before we have our first session is if we could wave a magic wand, what would your business look like? So this is what I want you to do. Now, wave that magic wand. Pretend that there is absolutely no obstacle. There is no obstacle in money. There is no obstacle in time. There is no obstacle in skill set, personal skill set. There is no obstacle in employees. There is no obstacles whatsoever. You just get to say to the genie, boom, this is what I want. And if that answer that you come up with is not the business you're running. I think this is a time to give some careful consideration. How can you make a shift to over the next several months and possibly year, move your business closer to your magic wand version of your business? Okay, because this is a time for the space, this, the thinking, the creating, the, the planning the letting your mind relax and lean into it. Okay. And if you were on that track already, if you do that exercise and you're just like, yeah, I, like everything about where I'm at is that I just need more time. I need more resources. I need more information. I need more knowledge. I need more, you know, homies. I need more buddies. Then keep going, keep going, keep creating it. Keep, keep expecting to be able to do what you want to do, okay? And then the last and final thing that I want you to do is look inward. So a little bit of that is looking inward, right? But it's in relation to your business. I want you to look inward as a human being too. Um, and just, I want you to look inward and have a real moment with yourself and say, how am I processing this? And, you know, my Aunt Honey is an amazing lady. You have heard me talk about her and my mother many times. And if you came to Luann Live last year, uh, you had the opportunity to meet these ladies. And you have met my cousin Eileen. This is her mom. And my Aunt Honey taught me a mechanism when I was in one of the most difficult periods of my life. The most, it is the single most challenging thing I've ever gone through in my life. And um, it wasn't the recession, which I thought was the most challenging thing I ever went through. Um, and she said to me, Lou, what's your lesson here? What's your lesson? And she said it to me at the very beginning of this challenging crisis. So I was nowhere near through it. I had three months more before I was going to come out the other side of this really, truly life challenging event. Um, I was only about five days into it. And um, I remember 
like saying to her, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just like so frightened. I'm so scared. I don't know what to do. I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure. And she just said, you don't, you don't have to have an answer for it now, but I want you to be listening for it. And so I want you to do that because there is each one of us is going to have a lesson in this. And the lesson could be a business lesson. The lesson could be a lesson in our personal life. The lesson could be in our, you know, look, it could be anything. It could be the way you parent your kids. It could be the way you're in a relationship with your husband or wife. It could be the way you have a relationship with your grandchildren or your parents. It could be the way you have a relationship with your employees. It could be your philosophy on business. It could be your direction in business. It could be tiny it could be the way you run your schedule every day. I don't know what it is, but my point is, is that it helped me and that I hope that it will help you because whenever I'm going through something really hard, I literally just will say, where's your lesson here? Where's your lesson here? And what I find is, is it just shifts my mind from the fear to something I'll use the word proactive, something proactive that I can do, that I can be mentally seeking and I can, instead of pushing away the fear and pushing away the outside circumstances, it gives me this almost detached ability. Like I almost feel like, okay, just sit here. And so if you are frightened now, if you are not sure if you're going to come through it. If you are, have eyeballs looking at you, employees looking at you, if you have, you know, debtors looking at you, if you have, you know, children looking at you and you're just like, what is going on? You know, I just offer it as possibly a mechanism that might help you to just process it and cope. Okay. And so look for your lesson. And then the final thing that I want to share with you is um, find something to be grateful for. Find something to be grateful for. Um, every day there is something to be grateful for. Um, it could be an employee that comes up with an amazing idea um, for a new way to do business. It could be a spouse who just like does bath time for your kid that night without being asked. Um, it could be, you know, the healthcare workers that are on the front line taking care of so many people that are literally succumbing, okay? So find something, and maybe it's just the gratitude for having a little more time every day to really thoughtfully think about how your business is going to come out of this and to put into motion some of the plans to make it happen. So um, it can be personal, it could be business, it could be anything. But the thing, and the other thing I, I want you to do is I want you to think about sharing and showing grace with each other. Because I've already started to see one or two comments on, oh my God, you know, another webinar. Oh my God, another course. Like there's so much noise out there. Um, oh my goodness, you know, I don't know what, you know, this is whatever. And the thing is, you know, you need to leave room that people process things different ways. So if there is too much coming at you, turn it off. Turn it off. Turn your Instagram off, turn your Facebook off, turn the TV off, read a book, do a puzzle, put your processes in place, turn it off. But you know, there's other people that process fear and anxiety and grief by doing. And there's, so you have, to, you have to leave the grace that everybody is going to handle this differently. And just like you might be the person there to provide a solution for somebody to make a desk in their laundry room, <laughs> somebody else is going to give some information or news or, you know, anything that somebody else wants. So um, my thing is, is that if you want the time to unplug, unplug. But understand that not only is it everybody's going to do it differently, but 
ultimately my fear is that this is going to be a big blip, not a little blip. And if you unplug completely, then own it, own it and get your financial ducks in a row. Own that you're going to risk your business and lean into whatever it is you're turning to. But don't begrudge others who want to build through it um, and don't judge others. And at the same time, for those of you out there that are really just pedal to the metal, if you have a friend, a coworker, an employee, a colleague that is taking this time to just step back and to be and to, you know, be quiet, you have to acknowledge it in the other person. It's as simple as that. This is too dramatic an event for it not to be revealed that we all are going to handle things differently. And I am just really, you know, five or 10 years ago, we weren't so connected virtually on the internet. And um, we are now. So just be kind in your comments and be supportive. And if you have something nice to say, say it. And if you don't, leave it off. All right. Because you don't know what somebody's going through and you don't know how they're choosing to get through it. Okay. Um, and I know it seems crazy that I'm including that. Um, but I think it's necessary. I do. I do think it's necessary. So, all right. Here's the thing the big sources to get the expert advice on how to pull in. Like if you need to work with a marketing firm in order to come up with ideas, if you need to work with a branding firm in order to make that pivot, if you need to work with a web developer in order to put a, a, a e-commerce cart on your site, if you need to work with your CPA, if you need to work with a business coach, if you need to just, you know, whatever it is, reach out to those professionals that can help you. Do not hesitate. Okay. Um, this was, this is the pep talk to motivate you to look at yourself. What do you need? What can you do? How are you going to do it? And who are you going to get to help you do it? All right. Because um, you can come through it. All right. But it's going to take, it's going to take intention. It's going to take some ingenuity on your part and um, it's going to take some work but you can do it well i do hope that you had an aha moment in there i hope something that i said resonated with you that will help you lead your company to the other side of this crisis and again if you need the video recordings to all of that content please go to mydomastudio.com forward slash one nine hours and i have to say while so many of us are dealing with running our businesses remotely homeschooling our children trying to visit our family between windows and doors i also know that many of us are facing the crisis where it is the most unthinkable, with the sickness of a cherished friend or family member, or horribly with the loss of loved ones. I know, I'm here in New Jersey, you know, and I'm in New Jersey 13 miles from New York City, which these two areas have been among the hardest hit areas in the U.S. So, I mean, I have sadly had had several friends that have been sick with COVID-19 and thankfully recover. And we've also had a friend pass away. And we certainly have had family of friends pass away. So my heart goes out to you because I know how hard this is on every level, right? Now, I want to say though, if you're here with me, if you're listening to this, then I know that you can do this. I know that you have what it takes to get through it, all right? So get up each day, do your best each day, whatever that looks like on that day, in this time, that might be different each day, what you're capable of doing based on everything that's happening in your world right now, okay, your personal world, all right? So some days you need to give yourself a pass, and other days you need to give yourself a little, you know, shot in the booty to get going. But whatever it is, do your best each day and decide to be excellent. 
Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.